Hey friends, welcome back to Midweek Encouragement. I'm so glad that you could join us today. I have something kind of exciting to share about you. The, before I would go into the message I want to share, how many of you like popcorn? I do, and I hope you do. It's one of those things that it's a snack that if I go into a movie theater, I smell the aroma, I want some popcorn. In fact, we have a restaurant here in town that is connected to a movie theater. And when I'm in there eating and I smell the popcorn, I want popcorn for dessert. Uh, I don't always get it. I like making popcorn at home and I use my microwave to make it. And it's just something that I really enjoy. And I've often wondered, how could you predict, if you put all the popcorn into your popcorn popper, could you ever predict which popcorn kernel is going to pop first? There's no way we could do it. And you couldn't even force a single kernel to pop. How does popcorn even work? I mean, I'd like to meet the guy that ever discovered popcorn and say thank you because I enjoyed popcorn. But somebody had to discover that if you heated it up, it would pop. And why does it do that? Well, Inside that little kernel, there's a bunch of moisture. And when it gets heated up, the moisture expands, breaking that hard outer crust and puffing up into that fruitful uh, thing that we enjoy eating. Uh, and, and it's delicious. Now, I, there, I've got some different seasonings. I like to put on my popcorn and I enjoy sitting down and just eating some popcorn. But we don't know when it's going to pop and how much of it is going to pop. Now, with that popping in mind, have you ever had somebody just pop into your mind? You're driving down the road, you're doing your normal things of the day, whatever you may be doing, all of a sudden, a person's name pops into your mind. Hmm, wonder why that is. Could it be, and some people say, well, I never hear the voice of God, but could it be that God is actually speaking to you when somebody else's name pops into your mind? You're just doing your ordinary thing, and all of a sudden, boop, there's their name. It is not a time for you to go and figure, call somebody else and say, hey, how's so-and-so doing? Their name just popped into my head. Or I wonder how they're doing. I think God, through his Holy Spirit, pops their name into our head so that we might be praying for them, that we may be lifting them up. Uh, it's not a time to call or anybody anybody else. It's an invitation for you to take them to God the Father and pray for them. And um, maybe not necessarily falling on your knees, but or getting out your prayer journal. I'm talking. Let's stop, drop, and roll. Let's stop what we're doing for just a moment. Drop their name before the Father and get on with our role. Sometimes we may need to sit there with that name longer and pray for them longer than just stop, drop, and roll. But um, I think the Holy Spirit is tapping you on the shoulder and giving you an assignment. He has a sacred trust in you that you would be lifting up and praying for them. The Holy Spirit has popped them into your mind, and it's a pop, to, uh, and that pop is a prompt to pray. Their name popping in your mind is because there is something going on around them and they need you to join them in prayer and lifting them up to the Father. I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in the fiery furnace. I don't know where Daniel was at the time, but they were. that was the same time. That's the same book of the Bible. But when they were in the fire, they weren't alone. And you couldn't smell smoke on them when they came out. And the only thing that got burned in the fire was the ropes that bound them. Jesus was with them. So we have the opportunity to be with a person that is going through a difficult time. When their name pops into our mind, we pray for them. What about <clears throat> in First Samuel when in the middle of the night, well, first of all, we have to understand that when Samuel was alive and he was under the uh, authority of Eli, there was very rarely a word heard from the Lord. Moses and Joshua had heard from God on a regular basis. Now there's not a word from God. Why? Because Eli's sons were being so immoral and corrupt that God wasn't going to speak to them. In the middle of the night, uh, Samuel hears a voice. He goes to Eli and says, you called me? No, I didn't call you. Uh, then it happened a second time and a third time. Finally, Eli says, maybe it's the voice of God speaking to you. And Samuel says, here I am, here am I, speak. Um, God chose to speak to Samuel over Eli, which shows us that God's change of command is not based on faith or on age. It, God is looking for faithful followers. God may use unexpected channels. And when he pops someone's name into your head, it's because he has a sacred trust in you. 
Or what about in Isaiah uh, 6, in, during the king, uh, or Uzziah's, he's dead, and the Lord, um, was, he, he's, he, Isaiah saw him exalted on the throne, and there's this great time of worship, and he, then he says, here am I, send me. So God is speaking to us today, calling us uh, through dropping somebody's name into our head that we may be praying for them. He's giving us a sacred trust. And we don't exactly know what they may be going through, but he's calling us to pray for them. And we may not know what to pray, but here's the good news. According to Romans 8, 26, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with moans and groans that cannot be uttered. But also, you jump down to verse 31 uh, or 34 of that passage of Romans 8, and it says, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. So when their name pops into our head, we have Holy Spirit and we have Jesus interceding for us. And then in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, it says that Christ always lives to intercede for us. And then also, uh, I, I'm reminded of Colossians 2.1. It says, I want you to know how hard I am contending for you for, uh, and for those in Laodicea and for all those who have not met me personally. What is Paul saying? I, I, I am, I, how hard I'm contending for you, how hard I am praying for you. Your names are ricocheting off the walls of my brain, and I'm praying for you, and I'm praying for you. Um, it, it, the lid is about to pop off. I am praying for you so much. So I believe that when we live with popcorn prayers, these names popping into our head, popcorn prayers start with the truth, which fuels our hope, which springs out in faith and love. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 5 says, The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel. So my friends, Today, if somebody's name pops into your head, and I hope my name pops into your head a few times, you will take a moment and pray for them. But we don't know what they're going through. We don't know what's going on, but we need to take them before the Lord and bless them that way. And if we see them or we talk to them later that day, hey, how's it going? I want you to know I prayed for you today because I care about you. And I don't know about you, but when somebody tells me they prayed for me, it blesses me in more ways than you know. So may God bless you as you pray for one another. Have a great day. Bye-bye.